Today's video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X, your Mac as good as new. Hey, it's Chris, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my $5,254.54 MacBook Pro. And I'm gonna be comparing it a lot throughout this video to my 2016 MacBook Pro, which was pretty much maxed out as well. Because I feel like a lot of people are comparing it to last year's MacBook Pro, but a lot of people that are gonna be upgrading are upgrading from something older than last year. So hopefully that's gonna be useful to you. Now I'm gonna hit everything that you would expect in this video, but I'm also gonna cover three issues that I've been hearing about, one of which has really been affecting me already with this computer. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to the podcast and hit us up over on Instagram, because we're totally redoing things there. I'm gonna be talking a lot about this new MacBook Pro in both of those places as well. In fact, I already have been, so don't miss out. So before we get into it, just so you know which model and what upgrades we're dealing with here, I maxed out everything, upgraded everything, with one exception. I only got four terabytes of storage instead of the max of eight, uh, but otherwise CPU, GPU, everything else, push it all the way to its limits. And just so you know, that price tag of a little over $5,200, that's including Apple Care. I just wanna start off by telling you guys about one big takeaway for me right off the bat, which is not something that I was expecting to be one of the biggest takeaways for me. And it has to do with that storage. So I got that four terabytes and I didn't get the eight terabytes uh, because I didn't feel like I needed to spend an extra thousand dollars for those extra four terabytes when I could get something in the two to $400 range. But even having the four terabytes has felt like such a huge upgrade because I'm not married to now having an external drive with me wherever I go. And the upshot of that is, is that I feel a lot more mobile with this laptop now than I did in the past. Like with my 2016, I used two different drives pretty frequently. Um, for the first half of its life, I used a two terabyte uh, Lacy rugged drive, which is one of those orange drives that you see all over the place. Um, and then I also used a G drive, which had four terabytes, two of which I use for backup and two of which I use as like a scratch disc for editing my videos and all my work files. The G drive though, that was not powered by the computer. So in other words, it needed to be plugged into the wall. So obviously when I was using the G drive, that really kept me like tethered to the desk, even though I had a laptop couldn't really move around too easily. And then on the other side, with that Lacie, if I moved it ever so slightly, it could get messed up and disconnect from my Mac, so I had to be really careful with it. But then even if I go with something like the SanDisk Extreme, which is very, very small for an SSD, uh, great portable, but you still have to connect it with the USB-C, and so you've got something dangling off of your computer, it's just not ideal. So with all this built-in storage, I feel like a certain degree of freedom. So really, I'm kind of rediscovering this laptop life in a way because of all this built-in storage. So needless to say, that's been a big deal for me already. But let's talk next about the power because that's the real reason why I decided it was time to upgrade and why this particular model made a lot of sense for me on paper. I don't know how to say this exactly, but coming from a 2016 MacBook Pro, I was sort of expecting just like, monumental leaps and bounds coming to this brand new model. And while it absolutely does help me get more done faster, no question about that, um, it's only really about 50% faster for my most uh, intensive computing tasks, which mainly comes down to like video editing. So I'm talking about like um, exporting stuff, rendering stuff, just stabilization, applying effects. Now I will say this, 50% faster is nothing to sneeze at. Like I am saving time, I am getting more done, or the, although in some cases like <laughs> I should be getting more done, but it just gives me more time to like tinker around with stuff. There's certain plugins that I use that I'm amazed at how quickly those render out. And then there's some other tasks that are just like boring things like exporting that just I thought would be a little bit faster. So this new 16 inch MacBook Pro is slightly bigger and a little bit heavier because um, they beefed up the battery and some different stuff. So one question you might have is like, how bad is it lugging this around? Like, is it really awful? And somebody even commented, they're like, in my last video, you probably saw, I was like, I like to use the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro. It's not either or for me anymore. It's a matter of having both for pro stuff. But uh, someone was like, you gotta be Superman to carry all that stuff around with you. So really, is it that bad? And my answer is, 
It's not really. For what I get, I don't mind. Both fit in my backpack just fine together. And it's a little bit heavy, but if you're into like pro stuff anyways, if you're lugging around tripods and cameras and all these accessories, it's just like part of the job. So let's talk about that screen, 16 inches. Um, how is it? What is it like to use? It's nice. Something that a lot of people probably don't realize, even people that have this computer already sitting, maybe you're watching this on your 16 inch, it's not a 4K display. And a lot of people don't realize that because it still looks so good and so nice. And I think the reason that Apple did this probably is to save uh, some battery life. For my purposes though, it looks great, it looks amazing, and I literally have no complaints. I guess I need to mention the keyboard because the legacy of this lineup um, demands it. Uh, they fixed the keyboard, I guess you could say. Everything's working great for me so far. In my previous MacBook Pro, the 2016, uh, my left shift key did used to get stuck a little bit. That's gone, I mean, I haven't had any issues with that. Is it nice having a physical escape key so I don't have to dig around through several menus to get out of stuff in the touch bar? Yeah, even though I'm not a coder, like that's nice, it's useful. Is it nice having those inverted T arrow keys? Uh, yeah, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is nice, so you don't have to look down to see what you're pressing, you can just tell by touch. And you know, the touch bar is still there. A lot of people just hate it. Um, that's not me, I don't hate it. Uh, I couldn't say that I love it either, it's just there, and it's fine. Like, I saw one review where somebody was like, oh, the touch bar is so slow, and it makes it awful, and they showed uh, changing the volume and they tapped into it and then had to tap up or down. I guess some people don't know how to use it. You just tap and hold and slide and change things like the contrast and the volume. Um, it's fine. The speakers are legitimately awesome. You probably have heard that. Uh, here's how good they are though. I have the LG 49 inch ultra wide monitor and for a monitor with built-in speakers, everyone says, if you look at the reviews, that has some really nice built-in speakers and people prefer them over their built-in laptop speakers. Well, I don't actually. With this new MacBook Pro, I absolutely changed the output to the MacBook Pro instead of the ultra-wide speakers because it's much better, much richer. It's in the vein of like HomePod good. It's not a HomePod, it's not quite that good, but it has those undertones of like how good the HomePod sounds in terms of like richness and niceness, it's really good. And I mean, we could get into the details with the little subwoofers on each side that cancel out the vibrations of the other one so there's no keyboard rattle and stuff. You'll be amazed. The mics, which Apple calls podcast quality mics, are also nice. Uh, I've been doing some FaceTime and uh, asked people like, how does it sound? People are like, yeah, it sounds really good. I'll try recording one of the podcasts, uh, an upcoming podcast with this computer instead of my normal mic, um, which is a Shure mic, sounds really nice. Um, so make sure you're subscribed. I'll leave the link down below so you can actually hear that. It'll be a whole episode test of actually podcasting with this mic since Apple said it's podcast quality. Unfortunately, as good as that mic is, it makes no sense to me at all that the camera that you can use with FaceTime with this really great mic is still so awful. <laughs> I don't understand that at all because it's terrible. I guess it's usable though. Like if you're gonna have a FaceTime meeting or something, I, and I did, I used it the other day. It's just too bad that it wasn't amazing. Let's talk a little bit about battery life. Apple gives us a number and I haven't come close to that so far at all. In fact, for me, the battery life has been a little bit disappointing so far. Like this morning, I woke up pretty early like I do oftentimes and I was working on some stuff, a little bit of messing around in, in uh, Final Cut Pro, did some typing, did some research, maybe some, uh, just some email, like some light stuff with a little bit of Final Cut Pro thrown in. And after two hours, just two hours, I was down to like 43, 44% of battery. Like that's not very good. And that's without me cranking up the brightness because <laughs> there's something about it. When I unplug my MacBook Pro and I see the screen like dim, I hate that. And I try to like crank it back up. I prefer it to be as bright as possible. I know people are like, oh, that's bad on your eyes or whatever, but that's how I like it. Like totally workable and usable. If I take it out to the coffee shop to get some work done, obviously it's gonna last. But you know, I've been hearing like five hours as what a lot of people are getting. And that's kind of what I'm on par for right now. Let's talk about heat. Apple redesigned this, uh, the fans, uh, and the heat sinks supposed to make this thing run a little bit cooler. Somebody asked me recently, like, can you use it on your lap? And I'm happy to report that you can. Of course, it, it gets warm. 
Uh, but for me, it's never been uncomfortably warm, like using it on my lap. For sure, it's nothing like using a gaming PC. Uh, like I checked out a HP gaming laptop recently on the channel, you can go check it out. And that thing got so hot uh, that it would absolutely burn you, like burn you. So this is nowhere near that. It's really a very acceptable level of heat. But I will say like it gets warm enough that you can uh, put your fingers on the touch bar and like feel that it gets warm still. Um, kind of like in the past. And I will say, it's fairly quiet when the fans are spinning up. I mean, you could hear it, but uh, it's not annoying or anything like that. It's very acceptable, the fan noise. Oftentimes for me though, I'm listening to music or I got the headphones on, some noise canceling or whatever, and it's not something that I would even pay attention to anyways. All right, future Chris here. I had to refilm this part of the video talking about the three different issues that I've either experienced or heard about with this computer because things changed uh, enough in the last like 24, 48 hours while I was making this that I needed to kind of supplement what was said. So there is a speaker popping issue and I didn't have it at first, but I do seem to have it now. It's a software related issue. Um, Apple has said that there's gonna be a fix issued for it at some time in the future. As of right now, uh, when I'm recording this, I don't think we have a date for that, um, but at least it's something that's going to get fixed. A second issue that we've been seeing or hearing about in the news a lot is luckily something that I haven't been experiencing, which is screen ghosting. In other words, like if you switch between apps or something, then you're seeing a little bit of what was on the screen before, um, before it's not, it's not as fast, the refreshing um, as it should be. The issue that I'm having is that my computer will restart itself kind of out of the blue, out of nowhere. Um, and it's really annoying. It usually happens when overnight, like I leave my computer, it goes to sleep or whatever, and I come back in the next morning, I go to sleep, come back in the, in the morning, uh, wake it up, I have coffee, it doesn't, and lo and behold, it's restarted itself again. This has been happening all week, and all my apps need to be reopened, and like if I've been working on a Final Cut project, like this very video, it happened to me this morning, um, everything was all rendered out and like ready to go, but because it restarted itself, my render is lost. And so this morning I had to sit there and wait for like an hour for it to finish re-rendering everything that it had already done. So all the gains that I made, because this is a much more powerful 50% faster machine for me than my previous one, were all wiped out um, because of this restart issue. And then sometimes when it restarts, it will also sort of like glitch and freeze and it'll just be like a black screen. You can see that the keyboard's lit up, the backlighting, but you can't get anything to happen. You gotta hold down the, the power button for five seconds to actually get it restarted. It's just been a real pain. Either some sort of update needs to happen or uh, it's just gonna be a lot of trial and error. And here's the thing. If this was a $1,200 laptop, I would still be pretty upset because you that's a lot of money, like you expect to work. But when you're paying over, you know, in the four to $6,000 range, because you're really depending on this for your work, like it's it's extra frustrating. So this is a MacBook Pro. I'm using it uh, with a Pro app, Final Cut Pro, and the Pro thing that I'm doing um, is not working right because all my renders get wiped out in the morning, so I can't leave it. So I'm gonna have to like close it down overnight just to make sure that it's safe. But then I can't let it run overnight either. It's so it's frustrating and it is affecting my overall review. I'm glad I'm putting this at the end. Um, everything that I described before I talked about these issues is great. Like this is a really awesome computer, really happy with it. If basically the speaker popping is gonna get taken care of, I don't have the screen ghosting. If this restarting and freezing issue could be taken care of, I'd just be so happy. Um, but I guess it's gonna remain to be seen, like where we go from here. So like 90, 2.7%, I'm really happy with this. A little bit of me is very frustrated. There's some things I can do to mitigate it and still get my work done um, temporarily, but it needs to get fixed. And even if I replace it, this was like a custom build. So it would take like a week or more probably to get this, unless they overnight or something. It's not the same as like being able to just go in and trade it in and get a new one. And even if I do, it took me forever to get this all set up. So I am a little bit frustrated with this experience so far. It doesn't seem like this issue that I'm having is the most widespread of the issues that have been reported, um, but I think it's happening to some other people out there. I don't know how many yet. We may start seeing this in the news, I don't know. But keep it tuned to the podcast, uh, all my social media stuff, and of course on the channel here, and I'll make sure to give you some updates once I have them.
I've really come to appreciate having Clean My Mac X installed over the last year. And you can bet that I'm gonna have it installed on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I love how it tells me things like battery draining apps, and it lets me see at a glance how much memory is getting used on the system, and it gives me the option to free up more with just one click. I'm also really appreciating the anti-malware feature, which is important as more and more Macs get sold and the Mac market becomes a bigger and more attractive target to bad actors. So whether it's malware, adware, or even ransomware, the database is regularly updated so the protection module always has your back. With a beautiful design and dozens of cleanup and tune-up tools in one convenient app, Clean My Mac X can help you delete system junk and hidden clutter, speed up your Mac. Now get this, it removes about 31 gigs of junk from the average Mac, so what are you waiting for? Give it a try using a link in the description. All right, it's Q&A time. I'm gonna answer your questions. Question number one was how does this thing not have Face ID yet? And yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it needs Face ID. I want it to have Face ID. You want it to have Face ID. Face ID is like a pro feature on the iPad lineup. Why isn't there any Face ID? I don't know. It would make uh, all the sense in the world. I want it. I just don't have an answer for you. I guess to cut costs. The next question has to do with should you buy this now or if you're looking at the rumors, should you wait until the new micro LED screen technology comes out, maybe in 2020? So good old Ming-Chi Kuo, I don't know how to pronounce the name, uh, but he's always predicting stuff and is often fairly accurate. And he's saying that it's actually mini LEDs, I think, not micro LEDs, should be coming to the iPad lineup and the MacBook Pro lineup sometime between 2020 and 2021. So what's the big deal here? Well, it has to do with issues like you know, burning and screen screen ghosting, for instance, like it would never have to be all, all the weaknesses of like an OLED screen would basically not exist from what I understand in a mini LED display, but yet you get a lot of the benefits. And so that might be coming. Um, is it a reason to hold off right now? I don't think so. Because if you're like me, I already for me three years for the stuff I'm doing felt like too long. I would have liked to have upgraded it too, had there been a better you know, keyboard and, and storage situation, you know, like maybe I could have. Um, so when you need something, you need it. And that's the bottom line. So for me, I needed this now, I felt like, and so I grabbed it. Um, will I be upset and kind of angry, like something better comes out and I don't have it uh, in like a year or something? Yeah, I mean, it'll be slightly annoying. Um, but for me, like if it comes out in an iPad Pro, then it's about time for me to trade on my iPad Pro. So if I do, then I can use Sidecar, and you know, if I really need to see something on some sharp display, I could still do that potentially with Sidecar. Here's a really good question. Why did I go with the MacBook Pro instead of the Mac Pro? So a long time ago, I made a video and I say, I'm, I'm gonna need a new computer soon. It's probably gonna be, be between the new Mac Pro or the MacBook Pro. At the time, we didn't know it was gonna be this 16-inch MacBook Pro. It was before even the rumors and stuff. And um, But it was gonna be between, I thought, the new MacBook Pro, whenever that came out, and the new Mac Pro, which was already announced. Knew about it, but man, that thing took forever. To, it's just this week before you can actually buy it. Um, so maybe that factored in a little bit. Like I needed something already and didn't wanna wait any more than I already had. And MacBook Pro 16 was already out. Um, but beyond that, it really came down to just like, feeling like even maxing out the MacBook Pro, it was expensive and I could have done it more. It could have taken it up over like right to the 6,000 mark uh, without Apple Care. Um, and you know, that's about the starting price of the new Mac Pro without a screen. It just felt like I got more bang for the buck maxing out the laptop than I would have just gotten from the starter beginner package of the Mac Pro for the money. And that's really what it came down to. One question has to do with the hinge on the new MacBook Pro, the 16 inch. And somebody said they heard that it wasn't as stiff as previous hinges and so that when you were using it typing and stuff, then the screen was wobbly. Well, I gotta say, I, that's news to me because like I haven't experienced that at all. So I have absolutely zero problems with the hinge. So somebody asked, if you're coming from an older MacBook Pro that had zero issues, is it even worth upgrading to the 16 inch that may potentially have like the speaker pops or the restarts or maybe the screen ghosting, potentially? Um, that's a great question. I feel like my answer stands from just a little bit ago. When you need something, you need something. So if you don't need it, then yeah, maybe just don't even upgrade. 
But if you feel like, no, I things are getting too slow, or maybe I really, it would be a huge benefit, or like a life-changing thing to have that extra storage or whatever, or a bigger screen, whatever it might be, then when you need it, you need it. And I would say pull the trigger on this laptop if you need it. I don't know. For what it's worth, that's what I would do anyways. And if you're getting a Pro, a MacBook Pro, because you rely on it for Pro things, then get Apple Care. And I mean, you should basically have peace of mind at that point. Here's a good question. What if I can't afford a MacBook Pro? Then what? Uh, I assume that somebody asking this, the real question is, can I do Pro things still that I wanna do without the MacBook Pro? And specifically in the Apple ecosystem, I can tell you, yes. Of course, there's PC options, right, that let you do stuff. I prefer like Final Cut for my line of work over Adobe Premiere, it's just what works best for me. Plus, those export times are great. Um, but let me tell you this. I, was, I started this channel and I, I was filming 4K still at the time on a MacBook Air because the computer that I started um, this YouTube channel with, it was a holdover, a crossover from the blogging days. And when I was writing, I didn't need all this power. And what I needed was just something portable and I went with the MacBook Air so I could write wherever. And it was great for that. But then I decided it was time to get into video stuff and I didn't have the money right away to just upgrade to something more powerful. And so I just got by with my MacBook Air, 4K video editing on the an old one now, MacBook Air. So the answer is you can do whatever you need to do with whatever you have. For me, there's always a cost for something, right? You can pay a lot to get a really great brand new computer and the cost was money. Um, the cost for me, using an older computer to do something it really wasn't suited for was time. It took a lot longer for things to render. So I would say don't let anything stop you. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And be sure to check out the After Party Podcast because I'll be talking all about this computer a lot and I already have, so you can go back and check out some of the episodes there. I'll link it up down below or it's in all your favorite podcasting apps. Uh, also, make sure to follow us on Instagram. We're redoing our Instagram page. We archived a bunch of stuff and we're kind of starting over. I left a few things for you guys to explore, um, some old stuff, but we're really moving forward and almost it's kind of taking on the place of our blog, what used to be a blog. And so the captions are much longer, they're more entertaining, and yes, I have been already and will be talking about this MacBook Pro there a lot as well with some good visuals. Um, also follow us on Twitter. There's a lot of good updates there as well. I'm at Daily Tech in all these places, Daily T-E-K-K, -K, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.